The Section Takeoff Maneuver. In this video, we'll cover the Section Takeoff Maneuver from the Blue Angel No. 5 Lead Solo Perspective. The maneuver set begins on the taxiway perpendicular to the runway, consists of the taxi onto the runway, takeoff checks, the line abreast roll into a dirty roll on takeoff, followed by a dirty 90 degree turn, ending with a dynamic clearing maneuver to clear the crowd line, clean up, and clear the path for the diamond as they come in for the diamond 360. This maneuver kicks off the show and gives the crowd a taste of the kind of precision, excellence, and performance that you'll be putting on for them as the solos over the next 45 minutes. Stick close to number six, hit your numbers, and fly a safe profile, and you'll have teed up the crowd perfectly for the diamond and their incoming 360. Briefing. Unlike many of the maneuvers in the show, number six has lead for the entirety of the maneuver, from the takeoff roll until the completion of the section takeoff maneuver. Though you still have responsibilities as the section leader to brief the flight and clear them for takeoff, that means for this one minute sequence, you as number five are the wingman and safety officer. As the wingman and safety officer, everything you do should be an attempt to mirror number six. That is, however, until you break away for the dirty loop, making a powerful statement that the solos are not just another section flying parade. These maneuvers will be dynamic and full of impact. If you do everything right, you should have a clean jet and end up behind crowd flying perpendicular to the show line, two nautical miles crowd left at 1,500 feet AGL and increasing to 400 knots. Let's walk through how to do this sequence step by step. Walk through. Welcome back to the cockpit of the F-18C Hornet. As you can tell, we're not looking out the HUD at the moment, and that's because Brother Lev has just pulled aside us from our taxi to hold short at runway 07 here at Kobaletti. And now it is our job to provide the takeoff checks checklist. The takeoff checks checklist is something that we have created because we believe that they do it on the far end of the runway for the solos, but it's never something that's actually captured when the recordings of the solos radios are released. So instead of trying to dig up a checklist from somewhere, we decided to build our own checklist because that way it'd be a little bit quicker to get us off the ground a little bit faster. So let me run you through the checklist. First step is to declare takeoff checks, to which number six's response would be their call sign, in this case, Leb. First step on the takeoff checks is check your lights are off, which means to double check that your formation and position light switch has been turned off. Next up is to check your flaps half, mine are auto. That means Brother Leb needs to have his flaps set to half, mine are set to auto. That's because in order to pull off the dirty roll on takeoff and actually get the nose to pitch up as much as we do, in DCS at least, we need our flaps to be set to automatic. This tricks the FCS into allowing us to do a quick high attitude pull off of the runway and allows us to pitch our nose up quite quickly. We'll go over more details of that once we make it to the runway, but suffice it to say, as number five, your flaps need to be auto. At this point, we would say, check your waypoints in the box and showing whatever mileage it is to the waypoint. That's just to make sure that number six and number five, as a section, we are lined up and looking at the same spot as the waypoint for center point, this is important for safety. 
Next up is check your altimeter set to barometric, which means you're checking to see that your altimeter switch is set to barometric altitude. This would then be continued with and set to 2, 9, or 8, 5, or whatever the barometric altimeter setting is that was given to you in the brief by boss. Uh, this is to ensure that number 6 and number 5 are flying at the same barometric altitudes, which is important for setting up hits and also for safety. Next up is check your dispenser is set to bypass. Um, this realistically should be left off for an air show, but because occasionally we want to deploy flares just for fun, it's a lot easier to do that when you are set to a manual flare mode. So the way to do that is to set your dispenser switch to bypass, which is just past the stick. And then the last command is to check your seat is armed. This ensures that our ejector seat is armed just in case something should go wrong during the show. Once this checklist is complete, number six will say their call sign, or in this case, leb, at which point I will do a double check of our heading. I'll say, check your heading, my heading, and I believe it is 154 here at Cobility to be away from crowd, at which point Brother Leb will check his heading to make sure that we are once again on the correct heading, at which point in a real show, I would switch to 9COM1 and listen in for bosses checks. He will get a confirmation from AMO that he has cleared for takeoff, at which point he will radio up me on 9COM1 and say, Solos were cleared for takeoff. And then as number five, I would say, Solos ready to roll, boss. And then he would say, boss. And then I would switch back to eight and say, traits up on 8COM1 at which point number six would give a greeting, which lets me know that he has heard me and that I'm back on 8COM1 as expected and that there has been some sort of malfunction in the comms sequence. At this point, we would then wait for the diamond to take off. And once the diamond is clear of our path, we would begin our roll onto runway 07 here at Cobaletti to line up and wait for the section takeoff maneuver. The procedure for proceeding onto the runway is that number six needs to precede number five because number six needs to be outside of the crowd to number five. Number five, in almost every maneuver except for the Fortis, the Tuckover roll, and the High Alpha, number five is inboard of number six, meaning is closer to the crowd than number six. And the same is true here. In order to accomplish this, we need to actually detach Brother Leb so that he can go onto the runway first. Then when we make the left 90 degree turn onto the runway, we are in board of Brother Leb in terms of how the crowd sees the section. So as we talked about in our ground ops video, it's going to be chariots powering up to 70%. Off, brakes, now, Brother Leb, detach. Brother Leb will then say detached. I will then pull a right 45 degree turn using high gain on the nose wheel steer switch. And then I would line up in trail of Brother Leb. And if necessary, I'll give him a, a little brakes call if he's running away from me a little bit too much because we need to be lined up just right so that we can pull onto the runway and be splitting the center line at a safe distance away so that if we have any sort of variance on our takeoff roll that we're not going to be running into each other trying to adjust for any wins. So that was a lot of information. Let's see it in practice because it happens really quickly. Here we go. Takeoff checks. What? Check your lights are off. Check your flaps are half. Mine are auto. Check your waypoint is correct and in the box, showing 0 0.4 miles. Check your altimeter is set to barometric and set to 2, 9, or 8, 5. Check your dispenser is bypassed and your seat is armed. Lab. Check your heading. My heading, 154. Lab. Check your parking brake is off. Jerry is powering up to 70%. Off brakes now by Lab Detach. Lab Detach. Now that we are lined up in trail behind Brother Leb, we're coming onto the runway. We're going to look at the runway and try and find the point where a left turn is going to equate to us being evenly between the center line and the outer line on the left side of the runway. Once we sight that sight picture, we'll call coming left. Okay. On the K, both of us will take a left turn onto the runway heading, making sure to line up our heading bugs to make sure that they do not intersect and that they are pointed down the end of the runway on runway heading. 
once we're lined up straight and stable, we'll give our break cadence call. We talked about this a little bit in the ground ops video, but here it is again. It's going to be in four parts. A little breaks, easy breaks, a little breaks, breaks. So those four parts are a little breaks, meaning a little breaks. Easy breaks being a further progression of break pressure. A little more breaks being a little more breaks, and then breaks being a steady increase of brake pressure until we stop with the x being the stop. If we do this measured and correctly, number six should be able to brake with us, so it looks like the two jets stop at exactly the same time, at exactly the same point, line abreast. And it is Brother Leb's responsibility to ensure that we are line abreast when we reach the stopping point. Let's see this in action. Coming left, okay. A little breaks, easy breaks, a little breaks, breaks. Now that we are lined up and waiting on the runway, how we get cleared for takeoff can happen in two different ways. The first being if you have a diamond, you are already cleared for takeoff by boss, which means you only need to do the run-up sequence. But since we do not have a diamond, uh, I do a takeoff clearance that is the same clearance that they give when they practice at El Centro in California during their pre-season shows as the two solos. So let's hear that in action. Solos, we're cleared for takeoff. Check your parker breaks off. Maneuver, our section takeoff maneuver. Lab. All right, let's go over what all that means. Solos, we're cleared for takeoff is fairly self-explanatory. Check your parking brake is off, meaning to check that our parking brake is off because we're about to roll. Maneuver, meaning that we're declaring what maneuver we're about to do. And then our section takeoff maneuver. Uh, since this is the section takeoff maneuver tutorial, that's the maneuver we're about to perform, but other maneuvers could be the no flap section blower go maneuver, which is performed at remote shows, as well as the individual takeoff maneuvers, which can be performed either at flat shows or shows that have high winds. These maneuvers will not likely be included in our initial tutorial series, but we may add them later, depending on if we have the time and eagerness to do so. Now the canine among you may have noticed that I was putting the waypoint into the box by target designating the waypoint. This is so that it shows up as a diamond in my HMD at all times. I personally find this very easy to fly with, especially if you're using the HMD like we are. So that is why I perform that particular action. At this point, we're about to perform the run-up, which is going to be a radio call, which is going to be, check your parking brakes off, let's run them up. And running them up means that we are going to run up our engines to 85% with the tow brakes engaged. Once both engines are at a stable 80%, we will look over at Brother Leb, who will take that as an indication that we are ready to go, and he will call off brakes now. Blowers ready now. So when he says off brakes now, on the now, we're going to go to full mill power and release our tow brakes. Now, due to the Discord lag, I've figured out the timing that it's actually a little bit later than on now, but if you have a real jet with a real aircraft communications, it should be immediately on now. Blowers ready now means that we go into first stage burn. This allows me a little bit of room as number five to adjust my power settings to stay line abreast of Brother Lab. It doesn't have to be perfect in order to make it look good from the crowd. But we are striving for excellence, so trying to get it as good as possible is the goal. At 130 knots, Brother Love will call blowers ready now, which means that he's going to full burn. When he says this, we will back our throttles back to military power. This is in preparation for us pulling up into the dirty loop, during which time we will need to have the smoke on. And in a real Blue Angels jet, having smoke on means that you cannot be in burner, otherwise the burners will burn up the smoke and you don't see anything. When he says blower's ready now, that is usually the best time to look forward unless you can tell that you're deviating from your centerline position on the runway. 
If you feel yourself getting closer to number six, look down the runway through your HUD and make sure that your heading bug is still pointed down the lines of the runway that you're expecting. If it's off, make the corrections and just keep locked to the HUD. At that point, it's more important that you don't run into number six than that you are perfectly alongside him. At 160 knots, it's time to take off. I make the sugar call of see ya on the radio. Not a requirement, but definitely something I enjoy doing to let Brother Leb know that I am intending to take off. And at 160 knots, it's full back stick deflection. Pull the stick into your chest and leave it there until the airplane takes off. Once the jet settles onto a 20 to 25 degree nose high attitude, release the stick and hold that attitude until 150 to 200 feet. At 150 to 200 feet, initiate a very slow and measured right roll, maintaining the pull on the stick. This should loop you over Brother Leb and outboard of the runway, making sure that you are clear of Brother Leb so that you don't fall down on top of him. How much pull and how much roll you will need will be something that you're going to have to adapt to over time. And there's not a real specific measurement for it, but the goal is to be rolled out level by the time you are back at about 250 feet AGL. Now one important DCSism that must be mentioned here is that in DCS, if you take off with flaps auto in the F-18, the jet has full upward trim. This is what allows us to do the nose high takeoff, but it also causes a problem when we start rolling over, is that the FCS wants to continue to have that nose high trim. In order to rectify this, we need to flip the flap switch between half and auto as we are doing the roll. If we do this all the way through the roll until we are level, at that point, the bug will be gone, the FCS will be reset, and we'll be able to go to flaps auto and take off normally. So, make sure to be flipping that flap switch as you roll inverted, and as you get back to level, flip it back to auto, and punch that back into military power. At this point, your nose should be pointed down towards the ground. You're going to put in full afterburner. You're going to do a full back stick deflection to squat the jet and get it to sit at about 100 feet AGL, at which point you'll be listening for Brother Leb to give his ready, hit it call. Once he gives that call, if you are clear, meaning that you are not going to conflict with Brother Leb, you see him clearly and you are able to clearly perform the maneuvers, you're going to call clear across the radio. While you're listening for all of this, you're going to be pulling a left bank to a level left turn. This is really important. You do not want to descend at this point because you're very low. So it needs to be a level or at least a little bit climbing left hand bank. And you're going to want to pull to about 20 degrees clockwise of the behind the crowd heading. And this is because of the maneuver that we're about to perform. Once you reach that point, it's once again full back stick to get the plane to pitch nose up. Once the plane settles, and you'll get a feel for this, it's back to military power. You're going to want to pitch it onto the left wing and add a significant amount of drive or push into the stick. Once you're on the left knife edge, engage a full boot of left rudder and flip the gear switch to get that gear to start coming back in. As your nose is falling back to earth, you're going to need to adjust the drive or the push in your stick to maintain the behind the crowd heading until the nose gets to about 5 degrees. At this point, your gear should be fully back into your jet and you should be able to release the rudder, get the nose to stabilize, and then roll out level. At which point, you're going to make an immediate right hand bank to 90 degrees and pull to the behind the crowd heading. Keep the jet in military power at this point, as you're going to want to climb away and get up to 400 knots at 1500 feet AGL to prepare for the knife edge. Once again, that's a lot of talking, but that's because this happens thick and fast. So let's watch it happen in real time with the comms. And I'll be here to talk you through it a bit. Check your parking brakes off. Let's run them up. Run up the engines to 85% and look up for the lab and it'll give us the call. Brakes off now. Military power. Blowers ready now. First stage. Trying to get back up to him, so full burn, back to military, back to first stage. Blowers ready now. We're blowers ready now, so that means we're back to military power. 160, we're going to call Sia. Here we go. 
full back stick smoke on as we leave. There we go. We're a little high on the nose, 150. Here we go. We're rolling, flipping that flap switch to make sure the glitch doesn't occur. There we are, level, full power, Ready. pull the nose, pull left, <laughs> clear. call clear, here we go, keep coming around, there's the 25 degrees away from behind the crowd heading, pull, full nose high, plane settles, left pitch, Wings left level. rudder, gears coming Floors up, ready. maintaining heading with the nose, 5 degrees, settle off the rudder, roll level, and here we go, banking right, behind the crowd, keep it full mill, Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling till we get to the behind the crowd heading, which is 064. Ease it off. Small Smoke level. Off. Wait for Leb's clear call. Leb is clear. Jerry's clear. 2.4 mark. Leb is clear. One mile. And there we go. As you can see, it all happens real fast, but with a bit of practice, you'll be able to nail it. And now it's time for a demonstration from a show we did a couple of months ago in Cobaletti. We rolled onto the threshold from the other side of the runway due to some restrictions at the multiplayer server that we are playing on, but the principles are the same, so keep track of how fast everything comes at you as we get ready to take off. Take off checks. Web. Check your lights are off. Check your flaps are half. My flaps are auto. Check your waypoint is, in, is correct and in the box showing 0 0.5 miles. Check your altimeter is set to barometric and set to 2, 9, or 8, 5. Check your dispenser is bypassed and your seat is armed. Check your heading. My heading, 2, 4, 5. Yep. Check your parker brake is off. Chariot is powering up to 75% off brakes now. Chariot detach, right lead. Lab. A uh, little brakes. Off brakes now. Coming right for lineup. Okay. Easing power idle. A little brakes. Easy brakes. A little brakes. Brakes. Solos, we're clear for takeoff. Check your parking brake is off. Maneuver. Our section takeoff maneuver. Lamp. Check your parking brake is off. Let's run them up. Off. Brakes. Ow. Oh. Blowers ready now. Blowers ready now. See ya. Ready. Hit it. Terry clear. Check lights. Yep. Wings level blowers ready now. Smoke on. Smoke off. Clear. State 99. Sure, it's clear. Uh, two miles. State 10. 1.5. Two miles. And that's how the Legacy Blue Solos perform the Section Takeoff Maneuver. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel, where you can find full side-by-side -side show sequences and debriefs. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the flight line.